This scroll bishop is, in recent times has been attacked very severely on social media. They've been calling me names, saying your faith is that, is this, and your belief is that, and um, causing uh, some sort of uh, discomfort to so many people that are very humble, very simple in their faith, trying to be a stumbling stone for people that are truly seeking the Lord Jesus from the heart. They said, look at this bishop. He doesn't believe Mary is the mother of God. He doesn't refer to her as the mother of God. That's a heresy. So don't go to this bishop. Enemy is very smart, huh? Because the enemy now is on fire. He says, all these, you know how famous this bishop is, man? TikTok, and they call me the TikTok bishop. Like even our beloved Muslim people say, Allah Akbar, come, I take selfie with you, brother. Are you the TikTok one? I say, tikki tikki whatever you want me to be, I walkie walkie. If we all say Mary is the mother of the word incarnate, no problem. Everybody's going to be cool now. Oh, are you okay now, Catholic Orthodox? Yeah. They'll be okay. This is the Nicene Creed, the word incarnate. They misunderstood a certain saint in the fourth century. By the way, Theotokos, which is a Greek word, literally it means the bearer of God, not the mother the bearer of God. She bore God in her womb. I don't have a problem with that. Because who came into the wombs of the Holy Mother? The second person of the Holy Trinity. Who is the second person of the Holy Trinity? The Son of God. Who is the Son of God? God in the beginning was the Logos, the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. This Word, Logos, went into the womb of the Holy Mother, took on the human nature and became man. This man, which God dwelled in this man the word incarnate meaning the word the logos put on the flesh the word logos put on the flesh who is this person Christ you cannot say anything else outside of Christ so why are you angry if I say Mary is the mother of Christ when I say Mary is the mother of Christ what am I saying I'm saying she is the mother of the word incarnate the logos became flesh if any Christian's got a problem with this then you're not a Christian and to prove this I go to a Catholic, to an Orthodox. When you come and give the body and the blood, I ask you, dear Pope, Cardinal, Bishop, Priest, whose body and blood are you giving? They will say Christ. Isn't it? The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Why don't you say the body of God? Why don't you say the body of Jesus? Both are wrong. Theologically speaking, both are wrong. Biblically speaking, both are wrong. The only way to be theologically sound Biblically sound, you have to say body and blood of Christ. So what's your problem? She is the mother of the word in Khan. So you, my dear friend, if you're upset with me, Mary is the mother of God. You go, I don't have a problem, Habibi. Why are you upset? Don't be upset. Relax. But since I'm in this church, I have to respect my church. And my church father, she is the mother of Christ. In the liturgy, she is the mother of Christ because I'm given the body and the blood of Christ. It is absolutely biblically sound. Even John Paul II, God rest his soul in peace. He said, that's biblical. You don't have, I don't have a problem with that. Be strong on your faith. Nice, not fanatic. Fanaticism is ugly. When you say, I hold the truth and the whole truth and no one else. It's too much, brother. What is the Lord going to do with you? So, if, for example, like the Orthodox says, that's the only way. What all these poor Catholics are going to, where are they going to go? Oh, we have to find a job very soon. Man, we're running out of job. It's not fair. It's not fair to say that all the Catholics, unless they're Orthodox, they're going to go somewhere else. Relax, man. Why, why do you think you're right? What's so special about you? Just like you say you're right, the Catholic will say I'm right. And I'll say I'm right. Then who's right? We need to be more relaxed. Yeah, we address few things, but in a loving way, in a brotherly way. We can't be fanatics. We cannot. No one, no one, no one in the whole world. I don't care who that person is, how high in position they are. I don't care. They can excommunicate me. They can call me a heretic. They can call me and put all these names on me. And they can say Christ has got nothing to do with you. You have walked away from the true teachings. You have walked away from the true Christ. You are a heresy. You are this, you are that. I don't give one penny what you think. And I'm saying it out of love and respect. You know why, my dear friend? Because no one, no one, no one can tell me when I was in the depths of hell, no one can say to me, Jesus didn't come and rescue me. No one. No one. So according to you, if I am excommunicated and I am a heretic, 
Christ shouldn't have come because I denied him. Excommunication means I am totally detached from Christ. I go to hell, but Christ came. Are you going to tell me it's not him? Get alive. All glory to the Lord. One day, the only reason I'm saying this, and I'm going to say it once, and it's the first time I'm saying this in public, and it's the last time I'll say this, but the only reason I'm saying it for the sake of those who are fanatic on their ways, on their beliefs, and they think they hold the only truth, and they are the only way to salvation and redemption. Please, enough! Come down from your high horses. Who do you think you are? Satan is having fun with the church of Christ. Look what he's doing to it. If you think you hold the truth, where were you in 2020 against the so-called pandemic? Truth holder, where were you? You came out. Orthodox Catholic, you came out and said you must adhere to the government. You must take the jab from the highest rank in the church to the lowest. From the highest said you must take it. And they knew it's a lie. Yet they pushed their people to take this poison of Satan. You're telling me you hold the truth? If you held the truth, you should have been a warrior in the face of Satan. You should have stepped on Satan, not be a coward. And after the lockdown went off, Jesus, Jesus. Now, where, where were you when it was locked down? Jesus, Jesus. So shut your mouth. Shut your mouth out of love and respect. <laughs> now, I'll say this for the first and the last time. One day, this one day I was very down, and very upset, very sad, beyond measures. I begged the Lord. I begged him. I said, please, please, you have to come. I want to see you. I can't take it anymore. I cannot handle it anymore. You don't have a choice. You must come. I ordered the Lord to come. <laughs> Assyrian normally stops. <laughs> I begged him, I begged him, I said, I, you have to come, you have to come. This is about you saying to me, I'm a heretic, right? I begged the Lord, if I don't see you, it's finished. It's finished, Lord. You won't see me anymore. I'm standing on this holy altar, this holy place, huh? I'm reminding myself. The Lord can wipe me out if I'm saying anything more or less or changing things. May the Lord strike me dead. He spoke on the spot. He spoke to me. He said, my son, why are you seeking me? And why are you saying, I want to see you? When you look at yourself, you see me. I am you. church leader lives in the desert for a little while and I'm not just saying literal desert I'm saying spiritual desert more so spiritual desert because the literal desert it's very easy to live in but the spiritual desert no extremely painful it's death but in a very slow, agonizing way. It's exactly the same feeling of the cross. The death of the cross is very slow. That second being hanged on the cross, it feels like a year. And the year is like a eternity. Because you're dying, but you, you, you want to die now, but you're not dying. This is the spiritual desert. When we live in that spiritual desert, will appreciate the Lord. He will give us wisdom to know how to shepherd the flock. I beg you, don't 
don't differentiate between one. I know in this holy church there are my beloved Catholics and my beloved Orthodox. I know. Do you have a problem? Is there any difference? But do you have an issue? I don't. I don't. The Lord doesn't. What's your heart? You're a son. You're not Catholic. You're a son. You're not Orthodox. You're a son. It reminds me, even though far from this analogy, but it reminds me, the Pharisees, the scribes at the time of the Lord Jesus, they didn't know what else to do to get rid of this man. According to them, this man is very holy. So they didn't know what to do in which way to attack him in order to get rid of him because he's causing them discomfort. People are loving him. So what did they come up with those geniuses? You are breaking the Sabbath. You are working on a Sabbath where God said don't work. So you are a blasphemer. You are breaking the law because they didn't know what else to, to do or say to go against him or make people go against him because of their own personal jealousy, personal envy, whatever. They were worried about their positions or maybe they, he took all the fame. The Lord took all the fame from them. So they felt they are a bit left out. So let's get back at him. So this guy breaks the Sabbath. The Lord Jesus said to them, if your donkey falls into a well on a Sabbath, don't you pull out that donkey? Yeah. Oh, so you pull out an animal from the well on a Sabbath and you break God's law for an animal? And you don't want me to do an act of mercy for this human being who is the image and the likeness of God. Is this the best you could do? I break the Sabbath. Why don't you look at the people I'm bringing close to God? Why you focus on Sabbath? How about these people that were lost to Satan? That were swimming in sin. Now they're coming back and glorifying God. Why don't you look at that and speak about that? Because it's not beneficial your personal evilish agenda, deceptive agenda. I pray for those people who are attacking us. But let me be very clear for all of you, my beloveds, who are truly seeking the Lord from the heart. Not those who are, who are doing Satan work and coming in a sneaky, deceptive way and taking a snippet of a video in a very sneaky way and putting it and translating it into English and to say to the world, look at this bishop, he's a heretic. Don't believe, don't follow, don't go. Why are you so burnt within? Let me be very clear, my beloveds, to everyone watching and everyone listening what my church believes in as far as Jesus Christ is concerned. The church I belong to, and thus my belief as well. Since this is the belief of my church, and I learned this from my church, then this is my belief. This is my church. Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He is the Logos. Where John the Beloved in John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Logos. The Logos, that is in Greek, which means the intellect or the brain. So who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the Logos, the brain? In the beginning was the Logos, the Word. And the Word, Logos, was with God. And the Logos Word was God. So who is Jesus Christ, the Word, the Logos, who was with God from the very beginning and who is God himself. 
So the Son of God is God Himself, all God. The Father, all God. The Holy Spirit, all God. My church believes in the Holy Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God in nature, one God in essence. Let this be very clear to everyone who seeks and wishes to hear and see the truth. I am a Trinitarian. And let me be very clear, anyone who claims to be a Christian and believes not in the Holy Trinity, then you are not a Christian, period. You are a fake, false prophet of the 21st century. So I believe in the Father, I believe in the Son, and I believe in the Holy Spirit as all one God in nature and one God in essence. The Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. The Son of God is the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos is all God. This Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, came down in the end times, as St. Paul puts it so beautifully in his epistle to the Galatians chapter 4. The Son of God came down and dwelt in the womb of the Virgin of all virgins, the love of my life. Mother Mary, the love, the love of my life. Till the day I go to the grave, I adore my mom. I adore her. I worship the Lord, but I adore my mother. Because her son is God. Okay, this is the belief of my church. Enough being so foolishly childish you know the second person the holy trinity came down in the end, end of times and dwelt in the womb of the holy mother the virgin forever forever she is the only person the only female that is mother and virgin at the same time. There has never been one like her, never will be, never will be. The mother virgin at the same time. She dwelt in her womb, took on the human nature and became man. In our church, we refer to the Holy Mother as the mother of Christ. Mary, the mother of Christ, Christotokos, not Theotokos. The Holy Mother gave birth to the Logos incarnate. The Logos incarnate, we believe what they, what we, what they call Christology, the study of Christ. Christology. We believe Christ is two natures, one person. There was a problem linguistically and politically back then. I don't want to go into this. There was an issue linguistically and politically. And politics always plays a huge role in dividing the Church of Christ. Politics or the throne causes a lot of problems. If every church leader sat on the floor, we wouldn't have had any issues. It's the throne that causes these issues. I'm the greatest. I'm the supreme. I am me, me, me. That's what caused the church to divide. The Holy Mother gave birth to the Logos, the Word incarnate. Christ. When He, the name Christ, the Word Christ. Who is Christ? Perfect God, perfect man at the same time. My church believes Jesus Christ, He is God from the moment, from the moment the Archangel Gabriel greeted the Holy Mother, the Virgin of all virgins, and He greeted her and said, full of grace to her. From that moment, the Logos entered the womb of the Holy Mother. From that moment, He is perfect God, perfect man, until He was on the cross, 
perfect God, perfect man, and between his birth and between his crucifixion, burial, and resurrection, all that time he spent on earth, he was always, he was always perfect God and perfect man. Never, ever divinity separated or detached itself from this humanity. Both of them united on earth and in heaven forever and ever and ever. Jesus Christ will always be the perfect God, perfect man, and divinity and humanity united in perfection in the person of Christ, period. This is the belief of my church, me who belongs to the church of the East, period, my beloved, period. When you go to your church and the clergyman is giving you the Holy Eucharist. But what does he say? The body of Christ. The blood of? Does he say the body of God? Does he say the body of Jesus? Both theologically not sound. Theologically speaking, only Christ applies. Why? Because Christ is the person where divinity and humanity were united. That's why it's the body and the blood of Christ. You come to this church, the body and the blood of Christ. You go to the Catholic church, the body and the blood of Christ. You go to the Oriental Orthodox, body and blood of Christ. You go to the Eastern Orthodox, body and blood of Christ. What is your problem? I don't have a problem. Why do you? You believe this is the true body and the blood of Christ? Who am I to stop? But this is my church. And my church fathers, they believe that Jesus Christ is perfect God, perfect man, united in the person of Christ from the moment of conception till eternities to come. Divinity, humanity never separated, not even one blink of an eye. There is no one church father that ever says that Christ is two persons. Enough of this nonsense, please. Enough of this childish behavior. What kind of mentality is this for me to say Christ is two persons? What a, this is sick. This is sick. One person. Divinity and humanity were united so perfectly the divine will and the human will work together perfectly because the human side of Christ, his will was given to the divine will perfectly. The human was submissive to the divine perfectly. There was no argument. There was no quarreling. There was no friction. There was no discussion because the human side of Christ, all from head to toe, inside and out, was all for the Father, for God's will. That's why they were united perfectly, harmoniously, completely. Jesus, the man, perfect like God as far as sin is concerned, because he never sinned neither with his thoughts nor with his actions. Perfect like God, because the only one that cannot sin is God. Jesus, the man, human, was like God, perfect, sinless. Behold, the perfect Lamb of God who carries away the sins of the world. This is my belief, my church fathers, my church. And if this was not the belief of my church, I wouldn't have stayed one second in it. I would have taken these clothes off and denied it. But my church is holy, built on the rock who is Christ Jesus. Lord, have mercy on all of us. Have mercy, Lord. There is Catholics here. There is Orthodox here. And there's, I believe, maybe Protestants as well. Oh. We should be careful. They're infectious. There is Eastern and Oriental Orthodoxy. Oh. There is Pope Cyril. He's on the altar. Oh, he's an Oriental Orthodox. What is he doing with the Church of the East? We are doomed. He's my sweetheart. Get up, man. But these two saints there are the sons of Christ. 
They are his family. It is Christ who chooses who to put there, not me. Who am I? Who am I to do such a thing? Can we open our eyes for God's sake? Open our hearts. It is Christ doing. What is, this bishop is nothing. I cannot dare to do such a thing. To be in the presence of these holy men of God, I'm not worthy. I'm ignorant. I'm dumb. I'm blind. It is the Lord who brought his sons together. Just to say, enough is enough. Stop dividing my family. This is in heaven. They are sitting together. Praising me together as one family. In heaven there is no Catholics. There is no Orthodox. There is one thing. The family of God. Christians. Belonging to Christ. That's what it is. Don't think you're going to go to paradise and say, Oh, a sign here. Oh, all Catholics this way. All Orthodox. Oh, you, what are you? Oh, Eastern, Oriental. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you go this way. This way because we don't want you to fight in paradise. We get a life, man. What's this? Wake up. There is only Christ and there is only the family of Christ. These names don't exist there. It's only exists here, man-made.